Hello everyone, we are the Go Free, and for today's video discussion, we will be talking about the emerging of nationalism. Um, this video is requirements of History 103, Life Work of Rizal. So, here are my group mates, Marinel Miras, Diana Rose, and Asario, uh, Mabel Yanko, Abigail Castro, and John Steve Opada Flores. And for the introduction, I will be sharing to you what is emerging nationalism. When we talk of this topic, it basically means when did the idea or concept of nationalism started? What are the happenings that pushed these early Filipinos to say that they don't want to be oppressed anymore? Now that we know what emerging nationalism is, you can use this topic outline to be guided as we run through our slides. This is Abigail Castro, and my topic is all about definition of terminologies. The first is Episcopal Visitation. Episcopal is from the Latin word means bishop. So Episcopal Visitation is an official pastoral visit conducted by the bishop on a diocese to examine the conditions of the congregational often done once every three years. Agarote is an apparatus or a weapon used for a capital punishment in which an iron collar is tightened around a condemned person's neck. Third is Polo. A polo is a system of forced labor that required Filipino males 16 to 60 years old to render service for a period of 40 days. And that would be all. Thank you. So good day everyone. I am Evel Piyanko. So today I'm going to discuss about the 1872 Cavite Mutiny. So first we have to define what this mutiny is. A mutiny is an open rebellion against the proper authorities. On January 20, 1872, 250 Filipino shoulders and worker rose revolt and arsenal in Cavite. The mutiny was a decree released by the Governor General Rafael de Esquerdo. He was a Spanish military officer or a political leader. The decree ordered that the arsenal workers would no longer exempt from a tribute to Anpolo. That's why many Filipinos were mad at them. The mutiny was a bad decision. Because of that, a government shoulder is executed of the participant. Most importantly, Guburza was sentenced to death by Garote. That's all for my report and let's move on to the next reporter. Hi everyone, I am Elaine Asranjaki. I will now discuss the subtopic number 4 which is all about the Gomburza. Gomburza, that was a really close during the time Jose Rizal is alive. We all know that Gomburza signed for Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Chanito Zamora and the novel of Jose Rizal. El Filibus Turismo was dedicated to the three priests. We can clearly see that it represents the dark side of conquerors. This portrait gives me the idea that during the time of colonization of the Spaniard was really brutal. Because even the priests can be executed, I see that the time of Spaniards is really critical in a way that anyone can be executed. If Filipinos convict a case or even if they are not guilty, they can be convicted if the Spaniards wants them to. In my own critique, this portrait gives us the bright and dark side at the time of Conversa. Bright side, they're still proud to be executed because they believe in their faith. Also, they know that Jose Rizal will be a successful person. They believe that one day, this colonization of Spaniards will be in end. I'm saying that this is because of El Palibus Turismo, the novel that Jose Rizal created and dedicated to the Comperza piece. My name is John Steve and I will be discussing about the secularization movement. So there are two types of clergy who, uh, who establish or strengthen the Catholic faith. The first one is the regular priest. The regular priest is the jurisdiction fed on elected privileges, so better prepared for missionary work because of their standard of discipline and asceticism. So the job of the uh, uh, the regular priests are they are the one who introduce the faith and convert the natives, and also they are the one who establish the religious communities. Then the second one will be the secular priest. So in secular priests, uh, they, they are the under the authority of the bishops and the members of the religious order and also they are the so-called priests who live in the world. So the primary task of the 
Uh, secular priests are they are the one who manage the religious order and continue the work already laid down by the regular clergy. So now let us move on to the four issues of the uh, secularization movement. So the first is episcopal visitations. So in episcopal visitation, Pope Adrian VI passed the only notable. Uh, which is completed the councils of Trent. Regular clergy are not allowed in visitation. Then, regular clergy didn't want to share authority which may cause conflicting orders. They were disobedient to their superiors and abusive. Then, the last one will be the secular priests were lacking in numbers. That's why, therefore, the government, government gave the wish of the regular clergy. The second issue is the management of parishes. The regular priests left those parishes wherein they could not earn so much income. Another problem also is that these regular clergy, the regular priests, viewed the Filipino secular clergy or priests to be incompetent, unqualified, and uneducated. Now this regular priest being abusive of their authority led the way for the Filipino secular clergy to take the lead. Execution of Gomborza Laymans were removed from their practices in law and business establishment. After the revolt in Cavite, some priests and laymen were arrested in order of Governor General Rafael Escuardo because of the Cavite Mutaini. As the punishment, all the rights were removed. On February 16, 1872, the judgment of the court martial was read to the priest in Fort Santiago. Upon finding the news, Gomez listened impassively, Borgas broke into sobs, and Zamora lost his mind. On February 17, 1872, they were executed together with an artilleryman called Saldua. Those testimony convicted the priest. Aside from the information that Ms. Diane provided to us, it has also been documented that these three priests responded differently on how they were executed. Father Gomez had his head held high, Father Borgos was weeping like a child, and Father Zamora was having vacant eyes. And these panners thought that if we killed these martyrs, then these Filipinos would be afraid to revolt against us. It was the other way around. During the execution, it became the period of awakening. It became a way for them to realize that they have been oppressed for a long time. It is very important for us to understand this timeline so that we will be guided what really happened. The first thing that happened is that Father Borgos led the equality among racial priests because as we could remember, there were two types of clergies the regular clergy and the secular clergy. The next thing that happened was on January 1872, there was a revolt in Cavite. That's what we call Cavite Mutiny, okay? After that mutiny, the three martyrs were pled guilty of treason. That was on February 15, 1872. The next day, the judgment was read in Fort Santiago and the following day was the execution which was on February 17, 1872. Everything that happened, including the mutiny, was the inspiration of Jose Rizal to write El Filibusterismo. And that's the start when Filipinos tried to accept that they've been oppressed, that these Spaniards have been cruel to them, and it is the start of the Filipino Revolution. Imagine if this Cavite mutiny and the execution of the Gumburza martyrs did not happen. Probably we don't have the freedom that we have right now. Probably we are still hiding in our houses afraid of the Spaniards. So that's how nationalism started. Thank you so much for listening to this video presentation and we hope that you've learned something.